Plaza, what's up? Antonio Serrano here and today I have a magical tip just for you. In this case I'm going to talk about a, a magical discovery and it is not like a physical discovery, a book or a trick, it was like an idea, it was like a realization, a realization, right? That I had when I was quite young, I was in, uh, in primary school, I didn't even finish um, my first show, right? I performed my first show when I was 12, 13 years old um, and I was quite young at this time, this was the point where I was learning some tricks, my, my parents were buying me some props, some tricks, but I never did like a show, right? Like a proper show. Well, I didn't, I didn't perform a proper show until yesterday, I think. So, in this case, this was an idea, a realization that I made when I, when I was quite small, and now thinking about it, I realize once more that from this little thing that I um, saw right before me at that moment, we can extract a lot of interesting ideas, right? This happened to me in a day out with the school, this was like kind of a trip in the middle of the forest in my city, and um, my friends were asking me to perform magic, and I didn't want to perform any tricks, because the only thing that I had on me was a thumb tip and a silk. And this was a trick that I was performing for a long time, but I didn't want to show them. And the reason why I didn't want to show them was not because I thought that they not they will um, they will not get full. It's because I was like, ah, oh, this trick is so silly. It's just like a plastic thumb and a silk. They are not going to get full by this. I, I don't want to show them this. And this was the major thing that was uh, avoiding me to perform a show. This was the major obstacle that was between me and my first show. That every time that I learned how to perform a trick, the secret of a trick, my feeling was like, ah, yeah, that's not very interesting, and I didn't perform it. That was the, the major leap that I had to do to perform my first show, like, okay, I am not interested in this trick um, because of the method, because of how it is done anymore, because I know 100% how it is done, but I should be interested in another thing. So I remember talking with my father walking through the forest and saying to him, you know that, because Eventually, I performed the thumb tip to some of my friends, to the teachers, to some parents, and they all they all were mesmerized. And I remember talking with my dad and going like, you know what, dad? Um, I realized something. I realized that a trick could be very simple for me, but people love it. It's like, I need to show people the tricks that I already know how to do. I always want to learn new tricks, new tricks, but people love the things that I already know how they are done. And my father was like, yes, yeah, so yes, obviously, you know how they are done, you don't feel that kind of interest in those tricks anymore, from the method aspect of them, but people would love to see those tricks. In fact, the tricks that you should be performing are the tricks that you know how they are done for the longest period of, of time, right? You shouldn't be performing tricks that you just learn how they were done, you should be performing tricks that you know and you have performed them a lot of times. And that was a quite a big realization moment for me. And now we are going to talk about all of the little ideas and thoughts that we can extract from this little moment that I have uh, that I ha that I have from this uh, in this trip with my dad. So let's take a look at the first idea that we can extract from here. Okay, the first idea that we can extract from this is that the magician must feel some kind of interest when he is performing, right? The magician must have some kind of interest. If you don't feel interest during the performance, people are not going to be interested. It's like singing. If you are singing a very sad, a very sensitive, sentimental song, but you are singing it like you were cleaning your teeth, like, yeah, I love you so much, and you don't love me back. And you're like that, it's like people are not going to get that emotion, right? You must feel that emotion that you want to uh, portray in people's faces, right? So you really need to have some kind of interest. If you want to make people laugh, you must have a jolly good attitude. Even performers that are serious, even comedy performers that are serious, they have a kind of seriousness that is portraying that behind that seriousness, that, that is their character, they want people to laugh, right? If you are being 100% serious and people cannot see the difference between being serious and being serious in a character way to make people laugh, they are not going to laugh, which is something that happened a lot to the great comedian Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman was not serious in a comedy character way, he was 100% serious, so people didn't know the difference when he was joking 
or when he was being serious, like in television or things like that, because that was his goal. His, his goal was for people not to know when he was being real or not. I would love to do a video about, about Andy Kaufman because I think that he was um, a great uh, magician in that sense, right? He, he never performed a magic trick, I think, but he, he was 100% a magician. He was always fooling people. That was basically his career. So if you want to portray some kind of emotion, you have to give away that emotion. It could be in a direct way, it could be in an indirect way, but people should know what you want from them. And what we all want, it doesn't matter uh, our style, our style doesn't go into it, uh, we should have people interest in, in what we are going to do. The, the basic saying that all magicians say is like, the thing is not um, guessing that your card is the two of diamonds, the thing is that the audience care about the two of diamonds, and that's the most difficult part. So if we don't care, people are not going to care. So one of the things that I extracted from this is that I should feel interest. If I don't feel interest in this little trick with the silk, I don't want to perform it. And if I don't want to perform it, people don't want to see it. And if I perform it like in a, yeah, this is very silly, this trick is not very, very good, people are going to be, yeah, I agree with you, it's not very good. But if I perform it like, okay, this is the best trick you're going to see in your life, please come here, I need a helper here, please uh, wrap my hand here, hold it, hold my hand. And I make like this very big thing from this little small trick, people are going to perceive it that way. So the first lesson that we can extract from here is that we should feel some kind of interest every time that we perform. Okay, the second idea that we can extract from this little experience that I had when I was a kid is basically that if we must have some kind of interest during the performance, the interest shouldn't be the tricks in themselves. Obviously, there are specific situations where the interest um, are the tricks, right? For example, if I am trying out a new trick, if I am changing the method of a trick, if I am trying out an original trick of mine, if I am moving around the order of, of tricks in a show, every time that I start performing a new show, you know that I have five fixed shows and I go all around them every five years. You know that uh, every time that I perform a new show, which is not 100% new, but every time that I start, I feel very interested in the show because it is, let's see if all the changes that I made in this year's show um, make a payoff. Like, let's see, five years ago when I was performing these same tricks and now I am performing these same tricks, let's see if the reaction is the same, is worse, is better, and I feel interest in the tricks, but those are very specific situations. Most of the times you have to feel interest, as we established in tip number one, in the idea number one, but I think that the interest should be in the audience. We should feel interest in the audience. Once the trick is like, let's say that a trick is 100% finished, which is something that I don't agree with, uh, but let's say that a trick is 100% finished, we don't have to touch not a single word, not a single line, not a single movement. Our trick is 100% polished, right? What is our interest? What is the interest that we should have? The audience the audience, the response of the audience. We need to make people laugh at a very specific place and we um, are looking for silence at a specific point. Our interest should be the audience. We don't care, you know what I mean, anymore about the trick in itself, but now the thing is the audience because if the trick is 100% polished, 100% finished, but the reaction from the audience is not the thing that we are expecting, the trick is not finished. Now we have to work in the second part of the routine, which is the reaction that we want to get, right? So this is something quite important. We need to feel interest during the show, but the interest shouldn't be the tricks, because the idea is to reach a point where our tricks are so good that they are going to be like that forever. So at that moment we can feel bored, like I have performed this like for 10 years, and now I have to perform this for other 10 years. What is my hook? What is my interest? The audience, having that social connection, that real connection, making people know you, making people laugh with the things that you say, trying to improvise, trying to come up with new lines that you put inside and you have to decide, should I keep this line or should I change it for this new one that I come up with or should I say both of the lines? That's the interest that I have right now. And my tricks are not at all 100% polished. I would say that none of them 
right? None of my tricks are 100% polished, but my major source of interest when I perform is the audience, 100%. So this is a very interesting tip, okay? A very interesting idea that we can extract from this experience. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, this next tip is quite, quite, quite interesting. And I really feel at home when I talk about this interest because quite recently I finished reading a book about uh, hypnotism, right? A very, very good book about hypnotism, the new encyclopedia of stage hypnosis, quite good book. And when I finished reading the book, I was like, okay, this is never going to work. And I try out with some friends, some people after shows, like, okay, let's try this thing, let's see if it works. And it works. It's great. I am not a professional hypnotist by any means, but I can hypnotize people most of the time. So I felt alive when I was performing hypnotism. And the thing was that I know what I have to do, but I don't control 100% of it. I control choosing the right volunteers, the induction that I have to give them, the touches, the things that I have to say, my tone, my speed, when I, in my speech, all that stuff. I control those things. But I don't control at all 100% of the experience because they have to hypnotize themselves, right? I am just giving them the, the clues, right? The path that they have to follow. And at that moment, I realized how can I take this interest that I'm experiencing every time that I hypnotize someone um, in my magic. And the thing was, if you are focusing on the things that you control 100%, there is no real emotion, right? The real emotion when you're perform you performing comes from the things that you are not in control 100%, but despite that, you control them, right? And this goes back to point number two. You don't control 100% the response of the audience. But when you want people to laugh and they laugh, it's like, oh my God, I am, I am under control. It's like the same when you say to someone, sleep, and they go, and you hypnotize someone. Um, it's the same, same feeling. It's like, I can't believe that this is working, right? And it is great. It is a great feeling because you know that you are not 100% under control of this, but it looks like you are, right? So it is a great, great feeling. So my advice to you at this point is don't focus only on the things that you control 100%. That a trick goes right, it's something that you control 100%. I know that if I do this move, this trick works. Perfect. If you are only thinking about that, you are going to feel bored, you are going to feel completely uh, outside of the show, right? You must be focusing on the things that you don't control 100%, but the audience should think that you are controlling those things 100%. That's what makes performing interesting once again, okay? If you never read or try anything related hypnosis, it, it is great, it is life-changing. I have no kind of goal, no kind of a will of performing a hypnotism show, it's not something that I would like to do, right? But it is great, it makes you feel alive again, it discovers, you, you discover this new way of thinking, these things that you can do with your head, that we thought that were completely impossible. So we should apply that same feeling to our magic, right? Let's take all of these things that I know how to do and that I know that they are not going to fail and let's put them around some things that may work, may not work, right? And some magicians do this with the tricks themselves. Themselves. It's like, I'm going to take this trick that really, really worked, but let's see if I can put something around it that is a, a magical face in itself that maybe doesn't work. But that's what keeps them alive. It's like, maybe this trick fails. I don't care. I have this out that is going to work 100% of the time. But I have this thing here that I don't know if it's going to work. And that's what makes me uh, feel interest in the show. That's great. That's 100% what we should do. Okay? And let's take a look at the last idea, guys. Okay, guys, the last idea. And this idea automatically brings me back to that trip uh, with my school and the families and my father. I remember that even my father said to me, Antonio, what happens to you? You are very sad, you are very bored, what happens to you? And it was like, everyone is asking me to do some magic and I, I only have here the silk. And my father was like, why don't you try it? Just, just try, just do the trick, right? And when I tried it, everyone was mesmerized. Everyone was completely blown away. And uh, once I performed the trick and everyone loved it, um, I felt alive again. It's like, oh my God, I am alive again. And it's like a point of 
the trick that I had in my pocket was the same. The method that I knew how to do was the same. But the emotion that I had inside me was not the same. Why? Because the difference between the first moment and the second moment, done performing the trick and performing the trick, was the audience reaction. Right? That was what made me alive. And that's something that happens quite often to me, even nowadays. I have this trick, I think it is not finished, I don't want to perform this trick. Oh my God, I feel scared, I don't want to perform this trick, this trick is going to fail. This is something that happened to me a lot back in the day when I wanted to, uh, to start performing uh, Billing Lemon. I was quite scared that I wasn't going to, to do the magic move in the right moment, you know, it's going to take me so long, I don't want to perform this, oh my God. And when I finally performed the trick, it was like, this is the best trick I ever did in my life. Oh my God, I am so happy that I performed this trick. This is great. And the method that I knew was the same. The way that I performed the trick for, for the audience was probably worse than the best, <laughs> than the worst uh, rehearsal that I had in front of the mirror. But the thing is the audience reaction. That's what makes you alive again. So please, never let that your magic makes you feel sad like me when I was in this trip. Never let that knowing tricks or not being sure if you should perform or not perform this trick, never let those things make you sad or make you feel dead, right? You must feel alive. And the only way to feel alive is performing those very, those same very tricks that make you feel sad in front of people. If you leave those tricks hanging around in your office, in your room, and you see them and you're like, I would love to perform this trick, but I'm not ready, I'm not, this thing is going to be in the back of your mind forever. You have to try them out. I'm not sure if the reaction of the audience is going to be a good reaction, but you are going to learn a lot. Even when I have performed tricks that fail, or even when I have performed tricks that didn't receive the audience reaction that I thought that they, that I thought that they were going to get, I learned and I felt alive. Maybe I feel alive because I am very happy, because the trick was great. Maybe I feel alive because I am angry at myself because I didn't did the trick properly, but you feel alive, right? Performing is always a matter of feeling alive, feeling interest. It doesn't matter where your interest is. The trick in itself, if you are trying something new, the audience, the reaction, uh, that level of uncertainty that you have because you don't know if it's going to work or not, you must find your interest and go before people and try it. Okay, guys? So that's everything that I have to tell you for, um, for you in this video. I hope that you find this information useful. It's an, an experience that is 100% real and that completely changed my life. I remember that at, very, at that very moment, I started taking all of the tricks that I had and going like, okay, what tricks can I do in a show, right? And, and that moment was like, yeah, I know how all this trick worked, but if, if I don't perform these tricks, what tricks am I going to show? What tricks am I going to perform, right? So at that moment was when my head completely changed and was like, obviously I have to perform tricks that I already know how they work. I'm not going to be able to do a show with tricks that make me feel a magical emotion or any kind of that. Talking about the method, the magical emotion and that sensation of interest, as we already established, must come from all of the other ways that we talked about. So guys, I hope once more that you find this information useful and I will see you, as always, in a near future. Bye there. <music>